Welcome back, everyone. This is the fourth quarter finish. We know it's been a while, and I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but unless you've been living under a rock, we may have just witnessed the best preseason of rookie quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. I'm your host, Casey. With me is Austin as normal, and Braden is back, and we are ready to get into this and start talking about what went on, what's going to happen, and possibly even some fantasy rankings. So we're going to dive right in. We're going to start talking about these rookie quarterbacks that all went in the first round of this year's draft. Uh, we kind of all have our um, kind of rankings that we thought maybe that they're, you know, where they're standing before the regular season begins. Um, if when you guys want to throw out a name and we can talk about them and we can figure out where we put them on our lists. I think we all know the name that Braden wants to throw out first, but. So, uh, disclaimer to everyone, I'm a Patriots fan, so you already know who I'm going to put as my number one, uh, Mac Jones. Um, So, the reason why I thought Mac Jones was number one in the preseason, first of all, I thought he looked the most comfortable in the system, and there's two reasons for that. One, he had the most attempts out of any preseason quarterback this offseason, or this preseason, really. Um, And not only that, but he had one of the highest completion percentages, And he had no turnovers. And while he only had one touchdown, he led every single drive that he had a score and drive, either a touchdown or a field goal. Every single drive he had did not end up in a punt or a turnover. Always ended up in a scoring drive. So that's why I thought Mac Jones was number one this year. I thought a lot of, I thought every quarterback in the offseason or preseason, anyways, uh, played really, really well, actually. I thought every single quarterback that was taken in the, you know, first round of the draft just, did a really good job. I just thought Mac Jones for the Patriots fits in perfectly into the system. And I thought he did the best this preseason. And, and adding on to that, I think Belichick's got himself a, a, another winner, you know, Mac Jones comes from Alabama. So he was coached by Saban, you know, Saban is not going to run an easy anything for any of the players. I mean, defense wise, offense wise, they're, they're really tough at Bama on kids there, but I think Mac Jones definitely impressed me in this, this preseason. Um, he, he threw a lot of good passes. Um, some that were even more than I, what I was expecting from him. Uh, I kind of thought he was limited as an athlete, but I definitely always knew he had a very good high intellect for football. So I was curious to see what he was going to do with that in the preseason. And, and he, he showed out, he's got a little more athleticism than I thought he did. So where do you have him on your list? For me, I'd probably put – I'd put Mac at number two. Uh, Mac, Mac had a very solid preseason, but, I mean, if we're talking – if we're talking number one this in this preseason, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, dude put up a 106.5 rating, 31 for 44 with 320 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. I mean, that's about as perfect as you can. Uh, and he was also playing with a starting offense. So, I mean, you're going up against most of the time in that preseason range of – starting defense, maybe some substitutes, but Lawrence looks to be the real deal. I I'm still wary of him because those quarterbacks with that first number one overall in the draft just always scare me because that's a lot of expectations to live up to. So, right. I definitely go Lawrence. Number one, he had a really, really solid preseason. That's about where I have. I had, I had Mac Jones at two as well. Um, I think Mac Jones, you know, fits into the Patriots system. I think at quarterback wise and skill, I still have to give it to Trevor Lawrence. He was, he was dropping dimes. You know, he, he still got that long ball, um, you know, coming, I mean, both solid schools, college schools they come from. I also have him, you know, he's come from coming from Clemson over Alabama, you know, Alabama quarterbacks usually don't perform as well, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping for the Patriots sake, you know, Mac Jones kind of changes that trend. Yeah. Um, and then with that, um, my number three quarterback, I don't know if this may be a surprise or not to anybody, but I do have Zach, Zach Wilson um, as a neg- as the second, uh, he was a second round pick. And so, I mean, the first round pick, second pick. Yeah, second, That's second what I was overall. trying to yep. say. I, pers- I mean, he didn't play a lot. You know, he didn't get as many attempts as the other quarterbacks did. But I think him as being a Jet um, kind of works out for him. I mean, you know, he's still, you know, like, 
couple kinks here, but you know, he was 15 for 20 this preseason, 75% uh, percent completion percentage. You can't really argue with those numbers. Um, my only problem with him, I think, is you know, he's he, he, I feel like he plays more safe, he doesn't take as many big risks down the field as you know, like Trevor Lawrence would, or you know, have as much confidence. But I definitely have him up there at three because I think he still has some pretty good potential. Absolutely, yeah. Who do you have in your number three list, Casey? Um, number three for me, well, first off, going off of what Austin said, I will say this so Zach Wilson did not get a ton of preseason action this year, which was very surprising to me. However, I think that Wilson has the ability to, to push the ball downfield. I think in the jets offense, that's not what they're about right now. They really don't have the wide ounce to do it. I mean, yeah, they upgraded with Corey Davis, but Davis isn't a deep burner. He's a, he's a very good route runner. I mean, we, we saw him from his time at Western Michigan, very, very good route runner, but not that, deep down the field threat, like a Tyreek Hill, you know, uh, a lot of the speedier wide receivers. So I'd say right now he's in the best position he can be for where the jets are at. I think their offensive line is coming up really well. Um, so that's, that's, he's in a good position to yeah, succeed he didn't, in the next he didn't get years. sacked. He didn't get sacked once this whole preseason. Well, obviously he didn't play a lot, right, but right. But 15 so for, impressive not to, to hit the ground at all. 15 for 20 was the most impressive thing for me for Wilson, because one of the questions of him was the same with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, they have rockets for arms, but can they make accurate passes? And 15 for 20 is no slouch. And that's playing against most of the time, again, starters and some some backups thrown in. So that Wilson, to me, in this preseason, just because of the limited action, I have him as my number five. Ooh. Ooh. That's fair. I, I like that. I just do, do know that he will be the Jets starter. So. Yes. Yep. He'll be the Jets starter, but from pre for if we're talking preseason going into the regular season, I didn't see enough to give him the give him the top three or even top, yeah, top anything. So I'm like right in between you guys. I didn't put him in three, but I also didn't put him in five. I put Zach Wilson at four. I thought he showed enough to where I thought he was better than my number five player, who is Trey Lance, because I thought Trey Lance underperformed in preseason out of all of them. Um, not to mention Jimmy Garoppolo is a really good quarterback and I know a lot of people give him shit, but he is a really good quarterback for the 49ers if he can stay healthy. So I think Trey Lance, if Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't get hurt again, Trey Lance might not start for a little while. And from the preseason he had, I don't think he should start for a little while. Um, so obviously it brings me to my number three pick. Uh, I thought you guys talked about Zach Wilson enough. I agree with most of you guys' points. I didn't think he played a whole lot, but I thought that when he did play, he played very well. So that's why I have him number four. Uh, Just need a little bit more sample size. And then for my number three pick, the Bears quarterback, Justin Fields. Now, my big topic for Justin Fields is why are they starting Andy Dalton over him? Because Andy Dalton did not look good this preseason. And um, Justin Fields really did. So... I guess my whole thing with it is that Cam Newton just got cut from the Patriots today and Mac Jones starting. So not sure what the Bears are doing here. I don't, they don't need to cut Andy Dalton. You're hoping for the Bears like it continues that trend of, you know, these rookie quarterbacks becoming the starters. Yeah, hundred percent. I, and not to mention, I think Cam Newton and Andy Dalton are really similar and skill level, really different, different skill sets, obviously. Cam Newton isn't great at passing the ball. He's very inconsistent. He's more of a runner. But Andy Dalton isn't consistent either. He's just a better passer. He's just not as good of a runner as Justin Fields. So they're completely different. Justin Fields is a lot more similar to Cam Newton. Obviously, he's a lot better than Cam Newton. But he's Justin Fields looks like he's ready to pe- play from the preseason I've seen so far. So my 1-5, to five, as I said earlier, is Mac Jones 1. Got Trevor Lawrence 2, which you guys talked about earlier. Justin Fields 3. Zach Wilson four and Trey Lance five. Um, I don't know if you guys want to talk about Justin Fields or Zach Wilson more, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll just go down my rankings real quick to kind of solidify, but I have Lawrence at number one, and then I have Mac Jones two, Justin Fields number three. I'll talk about it a little bit because, I mean, I have to. But uh, Justin Fields looked really solid this preseason um, from running to passing I mean, the last preseason game, I don't know if you guys watched it on ESPN or whatever, but it was everywhere. 
it was him on a sprint right making an absolute dime of a pass in the back right corner of the end zone to Jesper Horstead. And that as a fan of football in general gets you excited because rookies don't normally make plays like that. We saw it with Patrick Mahomes where he's doing the arm angles of the sidearm and the, and the deep passes. Right. And, and you just don't expect to see that. And so as a fan, that has me excited. Um, definitely to talk about the Andy Dalton situation, Nagy just wants that veteran in the, in the, in the cuddle right now. That's the only thing I can think of is, is scared that from his last quarterback. Yeah. Well, well, that and yeah, I would be scared from the last quarterback for sure. Um, uh, Mitchell Trubisky, he's not a horrible quarterback. He just was. I don't think he fit into the Bears. Didn't didn't fit. Um, what I'll say to that is this: is Nagy is from the the one coaching tree that has always done the same method. It is Andy Reid style to start a veteran quarterback over the rookie. You can go all the way back to Donovan McNabb when Donovan McNabb was not played as a rookie you can go then to Patrick Mahomes because Nagy was the coordinator when Mahomes came in and who was starting before him Alex Smith so I think Nagy is trying to do the exact same concept for the Bears which is Dalton just please play okay enough that we can make it into the playoffs and then if something happens we'll start Justin so that's my current synopsis on it and and like I said Fields looks like the real deal he's my top three um And just going down the list again is my number four is Trey Lance. Lance did not have the best numbers, but after watching his games, got he's he's a project. He's definitely a project, but he's got that rocket arm. He has the he has the mobility. He's he's got a bigger build to him. I think he's around like 230, 240 pounds. So he's he's got a little bit more muscle to him. So I think he's gonna be a little bit of a combo between Cam Newton um and I guess a Matt Ryan maybe because of that arm. Uh, but definitely the build is like Cam. And then Zach Wilson, like I said, I already talked about him a little bit, but just didn't – I didn't see enough. I, I, the accuracy is great, but just too little of a sample size to, to, to really go off of. So with that, I'll, I'll just go ahead and transfer over to you, Austin. And see yeah. What, see what you got. So, I mean, I had my, my top three, you know, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, and then I had Justin Fields. Um, I think he – coming from Ohio State, comes from a good backbone, great team, knows how to win, uh, which, you know, is what the Bears need. My only thing is, you know, you got the – it's always an experience thing. That's why, you know, you got Andy Dahl in there. I would be surprised if Justin Fields doesn't end up starting by maybe midseason, you know, if Andy Dalton doesn't perform. Um, but he does – Justin Fields does have those legs that could carry him, and he is – uh, as threat on the run, he can scramble. He can p- make these plays that you were just talking about, um, which is a key thing to do, even when you're a rookie, even when you play, you know, if you're more veteran. Um, and then I had Trey Lance at number five. Um, I personally think Trey Lance, he's a, he's a great quarterback. Uh, he's not ready to play in the NFL. That's my take on it. Um, you can have another take on it, but he just, you know, the completion percentage was just that. He, I don't think he felt comfortable. And I think to play, you know, this NFL league and this league, you, you got to be comfortable in the quarterback position. Absolutely. Yeah. Out of all three of them, he's the only one who got injured. He already chipped his finger, chipped yeah. his finger on a, on a guy's helmet. He's, it's only going to be a week, but I mean, even a small injury is kind of a, a red flag in, in this league because guys who are injury prone, it's, it's another yeah, thing. With, Carson you Wentz, the, you know, you got to be in there. Oh, yeah, Carson exactly. Wentz. Carson Wentz has got all that potential, but, you know, he's, he's, been hurt half his career i would say more than half to now i mean he is he's going on what one healthy season maybe of all of all of his career is one healthy season um and and not to mention to also add to it trey lance was the only first round rookie quarterback to throw an interception so just wanted to throw that in there for maybe people that didn't get to to see the preseason too much but Trey Lance underperformed, but also performed to what I expected. He's younger than all the other quarterbacks and that came out of the first round. And he's just a project. He's a project for Shanahan to mold. Yeah. And I think it's good that he did get um, a decent amount of reps during the preseason. You know, you only only had three games this year, uh, two preseason games. So, you know, give give your rookie the reps. Um, I think that's great. I think that's something that the Jets are going to lack now that they didn't start or didn't play Zach Wilson as much. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to make things interesting because, I mean, you are you were a quarterback 
Um, you know that yeah, you want to high school. <laughs> you want to you want to be able to be in sync with your offensive line, know right. what their calls are, because I mean, next thing you know, you have maybe a blitz coming and they don't know or they don't see it, you know, and you got to pick that up from quarterback position and make adjustments. So that's where I think the preseason it, it's a balance between people getting injured and also getting good experience. And I think the Jets went way too low on the. I think I think minimum if you're starting for the team you should have gotten 30 rep, 30 30 attempts to pass. 30, that's my 30 opinion. Passing attempts, yeah. That's yep. good. Now with the preseason wrapped up guys and the quarterbacks assessed, now we're going to get into fantasy draft season because everybody loves it and it's it's just that time of the year. So we recently just had our draft and we're really excited to kind of talk about maybe uh, one guy on our team that we're kind of excited to see. Um, maybe what he's going to do this year. We'll talk a little bit about what they did last year. All right, guys. So this fantasy season, um, me, Austin, and Casey are going to give you our number one picks. Um, not the, our first picks, obviously, because those are pretty self-explanatory usually. Um, but people that we're really looking forward to on our fantasy teams to really go off for us. Um, so my guy is Justin Jefferson. Last year, he had 88 receptions over 1,400 yards and seven touchdowns, and he had 274 fantasy points. So he was a rookie last season, obviously, so this is only his second season in the NFL, and I'm really excited. Um, obviously, his quarterback, Kirk Cousins, he's on Minnesota. So it's a, I think Minnesota is a really good team. He has Delvin Cook um, to kind of balance him out in, run, in the run game. I think Kirk Cousins, as much hate as he gets, um, is actually a pretty serviceable quarterback. So I think he's going to do really well this year, and I think he's going to build on from what he did last year. A um, couple of things I'm really looking for him to improve on are his uh, his red zone touchdowns. So last year he didn't have a ton of red zone touchdowns, but I think he could do a little bit better this year, especially with them bringing back a couple of key pieces like Delvin Cook to – kind of take off the pressure inside the red zone. And yeah, I think Justin Jefferson is on the position rank on fantasies, he's number six. So I, I think I got him like fourth round. So I, I got a really good, really good pick for him. Um, so I'm really glad he fell all the way down to the fourth round for me. And so if you can get good, um, what's the word for it? Uh, draft position. Yeah, if you can get a really good draft position on Justin Jefferson, Definitely pick him up because I think he's going to be really good this year. And and extending off of that as well is uh, Adam Thielen. You can't forget Adam Thielen over there. I mean, so you pair Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson together. I mean, Thielen is known for his route running, but he is a pretty good deep burner as well. I mean, Cousins, Cousins can sling it. He's not my favorite in the NFL. Like he's not a, a world star or anything like that, but he's a, a solid option, a – a verge pro bowler every year, in my opinion. So I, I think Justin Jefferson's a great pick. And that was actually one of the guys I was looking at in the draft. So thank you for taking him. Um, but so I'll, I'll let Austin go ahead next. Uh, I, I think he's got a pretty good one coming up here. Um, my guy is uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire. Um, I think two years ago, he was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. And he kind of didn't play to start out. And then came midseason, he um, blew, blew up. Like, he just kind of came out of nowhere. And uh, he was a first-round draft pick. But um, I think I had him in my fantasy team two years ago. And I, I, I loved him. I think he's a good passing threat, which, you know, and, and we have a PPR league. So, you know, in those kind of leagues, it's very nice to have, you know, the running backs to catch passes. Um. He did battle some injury last year and didn't, you know, live up to the expectations um, that he did the year prior to last year when he was drafted. Um, I think I deal with him. You know, he has battling some injury. I think he sprained his ankle in preseason week two. But I think it's just, you know, it's just ankle sprain. I know injuries can be devastating, but I have him and I'm excited to watch him play. Excited to watch. Yeah, I Clyde Edwards Valera is definitely one of those players that he's got that burst and that quickness that that can really change the game. And I mean, you put him next to the Kansas City offensive line that now has Orlando yeah. Brown on it as left tackle. Um, I mean, that that offensive line has 
increase their stock somehow. Somehow Kansas City has managed to get even better than they already were. So it, it's hard not to pick a Kansas City Chief nowadays. Uh, it's team, it's so. really tough. Um, but going into my pick, uh, my pick's a little bit different than theirs, uh, but we're kind of all in the same range of just young guys, these young up-and-comers uh, that, that are looking like promising prospects. Mine was actually this year's draft pick, um, and it is Kyle Pitts for Atlanta. Um, I think now that Julio's gone, um, Calvin Ridley's obviously still there, but Atlanta's been waiting for that that person to step up opposite Calvin Ridley because Julio has been injured and that was kind of tough for them last year. So I think Kyle Pitts is going to be that tight end for them. I mean, he's he's got a really slim build, almost more like a wide receiver. Um, so he's going to have that those wide receiver numbers. And I think that's where he's going to have his biggest impact. I mean, right now they're projecting him for roughly 800 – 40 yards and about six touchdowns. So roughly 190 points in a PPR league. So I'm excited to see what Kyle Pitts can do. That speed is legit. If you watch his Florida tape, it is crazy to watch how fast that guy can run off the line for a tight end. I think Ryan linebackers are going to have a very tough time staying with him and you're almost going to always have to put a safety on him. So it's going to really make the defense one dimensional dimensional and I think Matt Ryan is going to take full advantage of having a young slim tight end like Kyle Pitts to throw to all the time I think it's a great aspect or uh yeah like a new addition there to the Atlanta Falcons considering I feel like their offense has been very um tight end oriented in the past years yes. you know Austin Hooper Tony Gonzalez before that to, yep when, when exactly Tony Gonzalez, Tony Gonzalez. yep and uh the only concern I have to what Kyle Pitts is going to do is that the Atlanta Falcons offensive line is getting older and it has, has been getting older and older and their and their rookies that they are getting or, or younger players on that line are just not producing that well. And so how much is that going to attribute into it as well? So you, anytime you get a, an offensive line, that's going to be a little bit, you know, toss up wise, that might hurt production, but for the most part, I felt solid enough with Pitts to make him my number one tight end off the board. Um, obviously, Kittle went and um, Travis Kelce went Kelsey. before that, but I picked Kel uh, Pitts with the third um, third pick I had. So I felt pretty solid about it. But um, guys, that is going to be it for this show today. Um, I, I just wanted to thank you guys for supporting us, and, and we're excited to get back into making videos on, on a more consistent basis. Uh, we know we know that we we kind of fell off the face of the earth a while ago, but we all kind of got busy with school and work. Um, but we're excited to get back to it now, and and we're gonna we're gonna have a great season. And you know, let, let us know in the comments your guys' fantasy picks, who you're excited for. We'd love hearing it from you guys, and that's uh, that's what I've got. You guys have anything else to say? I just think let's have some fun this year, man. Look forward Welcome to back it. to the fourth quarter finish. That's it's right. A great time. Have a good one, guys. Yeah. Yeah.